Hello, I'm Carolyn and in this video I'll show how easy it is to create scallop designs like these in Inkscape using Interpolate subpaths. In this video I'll show the steps involved to create this rectangular scallop shape. I'll start the design by drawing the rectangle. Then I go path, object to path. The next step is to copy this to the clipboard. So I'm just going to right click and copy. For the next step, draw the small circle which will form the scallops around the edge and then duplicate. I'm just going to right click, duplicate. I'll just show here I've actually got two. Now these don't really matter where these are located in comparison to each other. What is important is that both are selected, then you go path, combine. You can see by the dashed line surrounding both that they are now combined. Now I will open the path effect editor. So I go path, path effect editor. And in path effect editor, I click on the drop down and select interpolate subpaths. Then I click on Add. After I clicked on Add, you may have noticed a few changes. Interpolate Subpath is now added to the effect list. And the design over here changed. You can see I've got five circles and here there are five steps. I'll leave it like that at the moment. What I want to do is have these circles go around the perimeter of this rectangle. And if you recall earlier on, I copied this rectangle to the clipboard. So if I just click on this clipboard icon here, now that looks like it disappeared. I find often when I click on clipboard, it will come to the top left of my page. So just be aware if you're designing elsewhere on the canvas and you think your design has disappeared, just have a look at the top of your page. Now to get this scallop design, I need to increase the steps. Now to increase the steps, I have a few options. I can use the arrows, or I can type the number in and press enter on the keyboard. I can see I still need more. Another way to increase the steps is just click with the cursor in steps. And if you have a mouse with the scroll wheel, you can just rotate the scroll wheel and the number will increase. I'm just going to zoom in. This is why I selected the rectangle for the example. Sometimes it needs a little bit of tweaking to get nice neat corners. See no matter how many steps I increase, the corners never look perfect. What I can do in this case is edit on the canvas. Here where it's trajectory, if I click on the first little icon, I can edit on the canvas. See I've now got nodes, I'm just going to drag the mouse around these two, so these two nodes are selected, then use my arrow key on the keyboard and just move it left. And my design now has circles in each corner and looks a lot neater. If you're using interpolate subpaths to create designs and you click off your design, you'll notice here that this is all greyed out. It is easy to return to, just click on it once and then you can continue increasing and decreasing steps. And if you want to further edit the canvas, just click on this first icon in trajectory and you can continue editing. When your design is finalised, you must go path, object to path. In outline mode, you can see these are still individual circles. The view I'll return to normal. I haven't applied path union yet because I want to actually join these two together. So I can align them and just apply path union once. And there is another way this can be achieved. So I'll just duplicate it and put it aside for the moment. Now with these two, I'll just select them both, open alignment and just center them. Now they are both selected, I can go path union. And there's the finished scalloped rectangle. 
For this example, what I'm going to do is go path union. Now all those circles have welded together as one piece. Then I'll go path break apart. Now I can see here that I've got two dashed lines, so I know there's actually two pieces here. I'm going to click onto a blank piece of the canvas, then click back onto the interior of the rectangle and drag that part aside. By doing it this second way, I get the scalloped rectangle identical to the first one, and I also get another rectangle with a postage stamp type effect. To finalise the video, I'll just give another example with the ellipse. This time I'm not going to explain each individual step, I'm just going to go through it from start to finish rather quickly to show you how easy it is. So I'll just draw an oval, right click, copy to the clipboard, then I'm going to draw the small circle, duplicate it. I'll show it's duplicated, but in this case I'm just going to leave them both sitting on top of each other, select both of them, go path, combine, then path, path effect editor, select interpolate, click on add, click on the clipboard. This time it didn't go to the top left, it actually stayed with my design. Once again I need to increase the steps, so I might just try 50, press enter, not enough, just zoomed in. I need to increase the steps again, so I'll just click with my mouse next to the 50, then I can use the wheel on the mouse to increase the number. Maybe a few more. When I'm happy with the look, I go path, object to path, I'm going to select both parts. Just to be on the safe side, I might still align. Now they're both selected, I go path, union, and there's the finished design. So if you do use Inkscape to design files for your cutter, you might like to try interpolate subpaths when creating scallop designs. If you would like a written copy of these steps, I do have it as a downloadable PDF on my blog at cuttingtime.blogspot.com. Thank you for your time and have fun.